Gestalt principles, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. And what we're looking at here is when we have features of a visual stimulus that we group together in the simplest ways to form a complete and meaningful whole. So we're going to look at four Gestalt principles and we'll start with bigger ground. Now in this visual image it's quite clear that we can distinguish from the two black faces from the white bars because we can perceive a contour that clearly separates these two images. We call this a reversible image. In the case of camouflage, basically in terms of Gestalt principles, in terms of camouflage and how it works, is we find it difficult to distinguish the figure from the ground because of the absence of a real or perceived contour. So in this case, uh, you may or may not be familiar with this image, but we have a dog I'm going to do a very rough attempt at drawing the outline of it. We've got a bit of ear here, head there, leg, leg, etc. So there's our Labrador. It doesn't look like one after I've drawn it like that. But again, the reason why we find it hard to actually perceive that is because of the absence of a clear contour that separates the figure from the ground. Let's move on to closure, where we mentally fill in the gaps between sensory information or we ignore the gaps. So in case of the image of the left, what do you see? Do you actually perceive that as three or four, sorry, three quarter circles? Or do you perceive a white square on top of those circles? Well, if the latter, then what you have done is you have mentally ignored the gaps in that sensory information or filled them in. So you've created an outline of those gaps, done that to form, to basically create a meaningful hole in the form of a square. In the case of a, the image on the right, again, do you see three Pac-Man-like circles, or do you perceive a white triangle on top of that? If the latter, then you have mentally ignored the gaps in that sensor information, or completed the image by basically forming, in your mind, a triangle. Similarity, where again we group items based on shared features, could be colour, could be shape, could be letters, etc. So on the left, we have columns and rows, squares that we group together based on their shared features. And in the middle, we have a triangle of dots that we've organised that way into a meaningful whole based on the shared features, in this case shape. The item on the right, well they're all the same shape, we are organising them into a meaningful whole based on the shared features, which is colour, white or black. So again, rather than just saying that we have 36 dots, you say that we have three white rows of white dots and three rows of black dots. We test for colour blindness for a minute part of the population that has issues with their photoreceptors in the form of their cones. So, if you can actually perceive that 45 on the left there, you're doing so because you are organising that into a meaningful whole based on their shared features, which in this case is the colour. Likewise for the 74, which I can just see on the right. Let's look at proximity, where again we group the items based on how close they are to each other or nearness. So again, if you look at that, uh, those boxes on the left, which have got, what have we got, 16 boxes. Rather than just saying you're seeing 16 boxes, you might say, I perceive that as two columns of boxes. And on the right there, we've got rows of boxes. Again, based on how close they are to each other. So for the objects on the left, they're closer in terms of a vertical sense, horizontally for the, uh, for the image in the middle there. Likewise, we've got these boxes here. You group them based on how close they are to each other, maybe forming a box like that, and with our little bunny rabbits there, three groups of four based on how close they are to each other. So I hope that's helped.